so can you uh can you go ahead and real quick um you know kind of name off what your your top five tips would be for people who carry every day who are out and about just living a normal life carrying okay you got to that point in your life where you decided i want to have a gun on me i want to be an armed citizen i want to be responsible check rock on get training well i took a concealed carry permit class I didn't say take a concealed carry permit class. I said get training. Aren't they the same thing? Mm, almost. Uh, sadly, most state-approved concealed carry classes uh, they they consist of six hours telling you what you're gonna what you how you're gonna get in trouble, how you're gonna be wrong. I I actually sat through a class where I got up at the end and I thought I don't even know why I have this gun because. According to the instructor, everything I do is going to be wrong. I'm going to lose my house, my car, my family, my life. I'm going to jail because I use my gun. So why even bother? Oh, uh, check uh, check online. There's there's lots of schools, uh, lots of good schools. And you say, well, oh, I know what I'm doing, dude. You know, owning a car and driving to work every day doesn't mean you're going to be able to compete in a NASCAR event. Uh, and the 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 scariest Scariest people in the world are self-taught shooters. They're kind of like self-taught motorcycle riders. How many? Everybody out there knows the self-taught motorcycle rider. They buy a motorcycle and they teach themselves, and they can go slowly in a straight line very safely. Uh, but when they start going faster, they encounter an obstacle. They're a disaster waiting to happen. That's kind of the same thing with self-taught shooters. Uh, as long as everything goes really slow and really calm, they're okay. But when they encounter an obstacle, everything the wheels come off. So get yourself into a training class if it's a, you know a full day a weekend what have you because you're going to come out on the other end realizing if you got a, you go to a good class you're like wow there's so many things that I never even thought about and then you'll have and I've had people actually come out of class and say I got more questions now than I had when I got here I'm like and I say that's good that's a good thing now you're thinking you're engaging your brain so get some training practice be serious about what you're doing you know, the once in a while gun carriers, I'll carry it today, I'll carry it tomorrow, I'll, you know, I, I won't carry it today because I'm not going to go anywhere bad, you know. Uh, you have to have the, and that's the hardest thing is the mindset, the mental commitment to say, am I playing a game here or am I really serious about it? Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, human beings are creatures of habit and it's really easy to talk yourself out of. Uh, you know, my, my mode of dress is not conducive to carrying a gun, so I just won't carry a gun today. Well, then you're you're kidding yourself. You're not serious about it. Uh, also, make sure that you put yourself in a position where you're never just a gun in empty hands. You always want to have something to bridge the gap. Uh, if not pepper spray or a taser, let me tell you what a a, a flashlight is is a really good force uh, multiplier. And you're like a flashlight. Yeah, shine it in the bad guy's eyes, and if he won't stop, hit him in the face with it. <laughs> yep, there you go. Oh. Uh, so you have 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 a plan, and then the, the biggest thing was really, it's paying attention to what's going on around you, and that's really hard because everybody's got the you know you have your life. You're like my wife said, stop, get this before I come home. I gotta I gotta do this, and then once we're done, I gotta get the kid from soccer practice or taekwondo or whatever. And so you're you're just wrapped up in your own life, and you're not paying attention to what's going on around you. And it doesn't matter how many guns and pepper sprays and all this stuff you have, if the first sign of trouble is some knucklehead hitting you and knocking you to the ground. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, not that this guy is bad. I mean, how many times have you been walking through Walmart and somebody could have done that to you? Uh, and if, if you really want to be serious about it, there are some places you can go and you can take training that incorporates and that or that kind of combines the physical aspect with the mechanical aspect. Shooting guns is mechanical. It's not. It's it's physical, but it's mostly mechanical. It's not dealing with someone who's like grabbing at you, punching you, you know, clawing at you, and so forth. And it's it takes time to get a gun out of a holster. I, you know, if you went to an academy, I'm sure that that they did defensive tactics where you had to do stuff with your hands before you could get your gun out. You know, a guy runs up and punches you in the face and grabs you, and you're like, ah, what do I do now? Oh, uh, and. So that's really it. all it is about being an armed citizen is get some training, practice with the gun that you're actually going to carry, and, and I'm going to call out you pocket 380 guys out there. Oh, what do you mean? Uh, I have a pocket 380. That's right. How many rounds have you put through your pocket 380? 
Have you reached 50 yet? 100? 200? Well, you know, it, it, I don't. My groups don't look real good, and, and you know, after about 20, 30 rounds, my hand gets a little sore because of all the recoil. And, but I got a, I got a, a 19, a custom 1911 that, that I shoot at the range. I'm really good with it. Okay, great. Which one are you going to have on you when you need it? We do that all the time. You know, we, uh, my friend Walt Roush liked to say, uh, Americans like they, they talk 45s, shoot nine millimeters, and carry 38s.